Hello again, everybody. Welcome back Hi, to the guys. Cast True Files. How are you doing? I'm well. How about yourself? Doing great. Good. Thanks so much for joining us today. I've got a cool story about a location that, okay. we used, that used to be called an insane asylum. Ooh, those They've are changed good. since then. Okay. They call it a hospital now. All right. Slightly different, but yeah. still crazy. So before we jump into all of that, into the story, go out, like, and subscribe to the YouTube channel on the Castro Files. Also, you can follow us on, if you want to listen to the audio versions, you can check out iTunes, Spotify, Under the Bar is Open with Beth and Greg. That's where we push out the audio. And then the other, the other side of it is Instagram. That's where we post all the pictures, the Castro Files Instagram page, all the pictures from the show. So right. with that, also check out our swag. We've got some, we've got some Good merchandise stuff. out there. Yeah. Nothing too crazy, but we've got some cool shirts, a hat. We've got some tumblers and some wine glass kind yeah. of things if you like those. So please go out, check those out if you're interested. Pretty mm -hmm. fun stuff. Nice. So Awesome. With that, we'll jump into the story. You Sweet. Ready? I can't wait. All right. So... I kind of went down again another rabbit hole Not you. of creepy places and I started thinking about it and I was like, what haven't we talked about in a while? And I remember you did one a while back and it was here stateside. This one was an insane asylum okay. in England. Yeah, it was like one of my first stories, so it yep. has been a while. So it's been a while, right. So this one is the Broadmoor Hospital. So a little background on it first. So the Broadmoor Hospital is a high-security psychiatric hospital in Crown Crowthorne, Berkshire, England. It's one of the oldest oldest of England's three high-security psychiatric hospitals. The other two being Ashworth Hospital near Liverpool and Rampton Secure Hospital in Nottinghamshire. <laughs> the town's there, I tell you. The hospital's catchment area consists of a north of four National Health Service regions, London, East, Southeast, and South west so with that just a clip that i want to share out this is from wikipedia on the broadmoor hospital the hospital was first known as a broadmoor criminal lu lunatic asylum lunatic completed That's in where they use in batman exactly completed in 1863 so this building at this facility is old okay it was built built to a design by sir joshua jeb an officer of the corps of royal engineers and covered 53 acres wow with a secure perimeter, the whole thing. Huh. So think of big. like a big ranch. Yeah. It's big. big. Right? The first patient was a female admitted for infanticide on 27th of May, 1863. So that was a big part of the creation of this hospital. It initially held only women okay. in it. And then they, over time, have added well, shortly thereafter, they added men to it. So I just want to give a little bit of background on kind of when it was built in there. Cool. So we'll get into part of a story. This is from the the DailyMail.com. Broadmoor Hospital harbors England's most famous serial killers, and now the files are made public. Wow. So this was by Christopher Hudson. So this is from 2008. So this mm -hmm. is a little bit older. But the history and who have been in this place is pretty crazy. Yeah. Right? So every Monday morning at 10 a.m., a banshee whale howls over the Broadmoor Hospital for two minutes. The ear-splitting sound rings out like a wartime air raid siren as the alarm system is tested. And for any escape-hungry patient who climbs over the high-security walls and closing the red, red brick forest, or fortress, rather, there is no hiding place. When it goes off for real, 13 sirens are in the neighboring Berkshire towns of Cam Camberley, Brack Bracknell, the names, I swear, Bagshot, Wokingham, and the nearby village of Crowthorn. All of them connected by a telephone network. If somehow a patient does manage to escape, the sirens sound for 20 minutes. Nearby schools, such as Wellington College, have to keep their pupils inside until it is safe. Cordon is then a cordon is thrown around Crawthorn and all cars are checked as police uh, <clears throat> block the roads and they clear everybody. Not until a single all clear tone is sounds can life return to normal. This is no ordinary alarm and there is no ordinary patient uh, patients imprisoned within this. The system was installed after the escape of child murderer John Strathen in 1952. While supposedly on cleaning duties, he climbed into a shed up onto a roof and dropped down to the other side. He then sauntered into the nearby village of Arbordfield and strangled five-year-old Linda Bauer, oh, geez. who had been out riding her bike. 
He was soon recaptured after locals saw him acting strangely and called the police. Straffin had Straffin was the kind of deranged murderer who should have been booked into Broadmoor, once better known as the Broadmoor Hospital for the Criminally Insane, when he first came to the attention of authorities. He had already spent half of his life in institutions when, at age twenty-one, he saw five-year-old Brenda Goddard picking flowers on Rough Hill on a on Rough Hill behind her home in Bath. Told that there were plenty more flowers higher up, she walked trustingly with Straffin mm. into the nearby woods where he put his hands around her neck. A few days later, he met nine-year-old Cicely Batstone at the cinema and escorted her across Bath to see another film, leaving a trail of witnesses before taking her into a field and strangling her. Jesus. He then bought some chips, slept soundly, and could not understand why police woke him so early in the next morning. <laughs> He confessed readily later, claiming that he'd committed the murders to provoke the police. Sentenced to death, Stratton, Stratton was reprieved after legal wrangles over his sanity and died two years ago. So this would have been in 2006 in Broadmoor, age 77, the longest serving prisoner in UK. Since then, the only the only major incident has been the escape of a child rapist, James Saunders, nicknamed Wolfman Saunders, went on a run after sawing through one a one inch thick steel bar and squeezing out of a shower room on the third floor. He was recaptured two days later. <clears throat> now Broadmoor has experienced a different kind of breakout, the release of files dating back a century and more with which each, which are being made public or made available public to the public for the first time wow. under the freedom of information act. Only more than a, the, the, Records have to be 100 years or older okay. for them to release. They include particularly interesting file on the Broadmoor resident named Thomas Hain Cutbush, a leading suspect in the Jack the Ripper case, which has never truly been solved, hmm. and notorious murderer of women. Cutbush was pronounced insane and died in Broadmoor in 1903. From the day of his arrest, the Ripper murder case has ceased. Okay. It's kind of like... yeah. Right? Did Broadmoor harbor England's most famous serial killer? Certainly. No other prisoner, uh, no other prison hospital had lodged, has lodged such a collection of killers and dreamers, the sad, the mad, and the bad. Designed by the military engineer, as I mentioned before, the idea was triggered by a case of James Hadfield, an ex-soldier who in 1800, while watching a play at the Theater Royal Drury Lane, leveled his pistol at King George III and fired at him. Oh, jeez. He missed. But a subsequent acquittal by reason of insanity caused such public uproar that Parliament speedily passed the Criminal Lunatics Act to provide for the indefinite detention of the insane. Okay. And a new institution was born, intended for the reception, safe custody, and treatment of persons who have, be who have committed crimes while actually insane or who became insane while undergoing sentences of punishment. So this is where it's... It's kind of one of those pieces that they try and treat him good. Humanely. Well, humanely, mm -hmm. all of those things. But we know from history how poorly people were actually right. treated in these prisons back in the 1800s right. and early 1900s, even even until more modern times. You right? were under the guise of good treatment, but you really didn't get yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. The possible causes of insanity were listed as anxiety, epilepsy, intemperance, vice, poverty, religious excitement, Fright and exposure to hot climates. Could you imagine that? Like, I got so hot I went crazy. Or you're just poor. Yeah. And they think you're insane, right? Because maybe you're hungry. Right. The 53 acre site, which now holds, uh, in 2008, held 260 men, initially had a room for 400 men and 100 women, but not until 1948 did it cease to be a prison and officially become a uh, hospital. Among the first inmates were two would be assassins of Queen Victoria. Edward Oxford and was 18 and serving beer in a pub when in 1840, something told him to shoot the queen oh, and Prince Albert as they rode out on constitution Hill, both bullets missed and they were later found to be blanks. Weird. Okay. Oxford was acquitted by reason of insanity after serving time in the asylum and was moved to Broadmoor. He was later offered a discharge in 1967. If he left the country, he emigrated to Austra Australia and made a living as a house painter dying in 1900. 
Roderick McLean, an un- unemployed London clerk, was also judged insane after he tried to assassinate the Queen in 1882. And she left, as she left Windsor train station, firing a revolver at her point blank, he missed. And before he could fire again, two Eaton schoolboys knocked him off balance with their umbrellas. McLean died in the Broadmoor 40 years later. Wow. So instead of going to prison, they sent him to Broadmoor because right. they said, well, you're crazy, but still attempted murder. It's kind right. of insane. No pun intended. It's kind of insane. In 1899, Susanna Bradley jumped into a canal. This was the first woman with her eight month old baby, leaving a suicide note for her husband that she was, quote unquote, not fit to be a mother. She was rescued with the baby dead in her arms. After heartfelt pleas from her husband, she was released into his care. Though dying of pleurisy three years later. Infanticide was a com was common, common in Victorian England. That people would kill their kids. And oh, most judges okay. and home secretaries reacted compassionately, waiving death sentences and releasing women back from asylums into the community. Broadmoor is one of three maximum security psychiatric hospitals in the UK, like I mentioned previously, but it was, but it has always received the most interesting cases, meaning that psychiatrists and doctors compete to work there, which is kind of messed up. Yeah. Right. Take the particularly fascinating case of Graham Young, a serial killer who poisoned his stepmother and two work colleagues. Born in Maysden in 1947, he developed a fascination with poisons and their effect on the human body and started <laughs> testing them out on his family from age 14. Oh, geez. He escaped suspicion because he was frequently poisoned himself, forgetting which food he had laced. Young went on, went to see a psychi- psychiatrist who contacted the police. He was sentenced to 15 years in Broadmoor, which he spent in its well-stocked library, continuing his research and using fellow inmates as guinea pigs. On his release, Young joined a photographic, uh, yeah, joined a photographic supply store in Bovington, Hertfordshire. I swear they just put words together. (laughs) Offering it to make tea. What do you think happened? Killed a bunch of people. He poisoned about 70 people over the next few months. None of them fatally at first while taking meticulous notes on doses and their effects and on which of his workmates wow. he was eventually going to kill. After two men, Bob Ingle and Fred Biggs died in agony. An investigation began into the so-called Bovington bug. Wow. Young helpfully confided in the police his interest in poisons and had they had they by chance thought of thallium his flat was searched quantities of thallium and antimonium acinetine uh and acinetine were found i'm probably saying that one wrong um together with the incriminating notebook the teacup murderer as he was called was sentenced to life and died at age 42 in his prison cell of a heart attack people are crazy well people don't learn that they don't stop so. Nope, he's a serial killer. Yeah. I think that's kind of the problem. Yeah. Unusually, several of Broadmoor's most violent murderers have, be- have bonded together, perhaps for protection or merely to escape their solitary existence. The serial killer, Kenneth Erx- Erskine, came to the rescue of Peter Sutcliffe, the Yorkshire Ripper, when a fellow inmate tried to throttle Sutcliffe with a cable from a pair of stereo headphones. Interesting. Erksine, a sexual psychopath known as the Stockwell Strangler, had been in Broadmoor since 88, 1988, convicted of seven murders and believed to be guilty of four more. Wow. Abandoned by his parents at a young age, he went through care homes and special schools before embarking on a successful career as a house burglar. <laughs> right? I mean, got to double it up. Got to have multiple gigs going. In 1987, he began to kill his victims, kneeling on their chest, then placing his left hand over their mouths while using his right hand to grip their throat and strangle them. Escalation? Yeah. Yeah. For them, uh, four of them were sexually assaulted before and after death. He was caught after the victim was, he was throttling, managed to press the alarm button and was given a minimum jail term of 40 years. Four? 40. Oh, okay. Four zero. (laughs) Yeah. Later, he was judged by judged a mental age of a seven year old, and to be sufi- he had to be sufficiently insane to be transferred to Broadmoor, where he where he would stay. Despite incidents like the one in nineteen ninety eight, when he was attacked by another inmate wielding a homemade flamethrower oh, during the hospital's where, New where Year's do these celebration. Build these things, and where are the orderlies? And that's in ninety eight. Exactly, like twenty five years. Where ago, are the whatever. guards and stuff? Oh, what are you building? Flamethrower. Right? Cool. Exactly. So. 
I don't know. That's crazy. <laughs> Despite Broadmoor's exceptional precautions, madmen <laughs> still find their ways of hurting themselves or others. Daniel Gonzalez, 26, who arrived at Broadmoor after a homicidal spree over three days in 2004, in which he stabbed to death four people, tried to kill two others with a carving knife, will not uh, will not be quickly be forgotten. Regardless of one of Broad, regarded as one of Broadmoor's most dangerous patients, Gonzalez told police he wanted to be like the character from Freddy Krueger from the horror nightmare on, <sighs> horror film Nightmare on Elm Streets and kill as many people as possible. A psychiatric wow. consultant described him as a schizophrenic capable of extreme unprovoked unpremeditated violence. So this dude would you just think? snap. Yeah. Gonzalez was placed on 24 observation 24 hour observation by nursing staff with a minimum of two people sitting within arm's length of him. Unable to kill others, he turned his rage upon himself. Three occasions, in a clear attempt at suicide, he bit himself with ferocity. None of them had witnessed before. What? He started probably attacking his veins or his arms or something. Oh, my Lord. Gonzalez was placed on 24-hour observation. Shouldn't they be giving him medicine? I'm sure, right? They need to be giving him bigger doses, apparently. Yeah, but that's where it becomes, is it inhumane? To just mute somebody. Completely. No, I don't know. You don't know. need to mute them. You need to get. No, no, I mean, like, just blank them out almost, because that's the only way you got to protect them and everybody else. Right? I don't know. Despite the many famous patients held at the hospital in recent years, the craze, the craze in Ian Brady and, and the Yorkshire Ripper, perhaps the most notorious, is the one of one who few of Broadmoor's residents ever saw. The original Hannibal Lecter, Robert Maudsley. Oh was in Broadmoor for three years in the 70s. Born in 1953, he was the son of a Liverpool lorry driver who beat him mercilessly whenever he came home from the orphanage, which had taken him into its care. He drifted through foster homes and psychiatric hospitals. By 1973, he was a rent boy, picked up by laborers who showed him pictures of abused boys. Maudsley garroted him and was sent to the Broadmoor with his new nickname, Blue, the color of the laborer's face as he was slowly cho- as he was slowly choked to death. So he'd go blue, and that was his nickname. Great. His next and most lasting nickname was Spoons. In 1977, Maudsley and another psychopath took a third patient, a pedophile, and barricaded themselves into a cell with him. The pedophile was tortured for nine hours before Maudsley garroted him and held up his body so that the staff could see him through the spy hatch. Oh, Lord. When the staff were let in, they found the man's skull had been cracked open like a boiled egg, with part of the brain missing, and with spoons hanging out of the cranium. Oh, Lord. Fava beans. Gross. Strangely, Maudsley was deemed fit to stand trial after this crime. Yeah, I don't think so. Despite his pleas to be sent back to Broadmoor, he was committed to Wakefield Prison. After several more, more killings, Maudsley now lives in, a, in solitary confinement in a two-cell glass cage, very like, like the literally, one pictured in the Silence of Lambs. Yes. His furniture is made of compressed cardbo- car- cardboard. On his one daily hour of exercise, six prisoners escort him. So keep in mind, this is... 15 years ago when this was written. But thuggish serial killers make up a small portion of the Broadmoor's residents. I discovered the high intelligence of many of the patients, which when lecturing there, one of those present was a uh, gentle academic man. His room stacked to the ceiling with classical CDs. I found out later that he had committed horrendous crimes. One of the most famous academic patients was Dr. William Chester Manor, Minor, an American surgeon immortalized by Simon Winchester in his book, The Surgeon of Crowthorne. Having emigrated to Britain one day in 1871 after, su- after suffering paranoid delusions brought on by his terrible experiences in the American Civil War, Minor produced a revolver and shot dead a boiler stoker from the Red Lion Brewery in London. Hmm. He remained in Broadmoor for 38 years, building up a library from which he volunteered thousands of citations for words appearing in the Oxford English di- Dictionary. Interesting. So he'd write the definitions of them, right? Citate, citing them. Right. Broadmoor, with its, with its dark red bl- brick, its towers, heavily barred windows, gaunt cell blocks, and long corridors, was an intimidating place. But Miner, engaged on his great enterprise, seemed hardly to notice. So industrious was he that it, the uh, was he that the editor of the OED, James Murray, arrived in 
person to visit him and became a firm friend of his. Interesting. Murray was not present when Minor, demented by sexual longing, sawed off his own penis with a pen knife. Oh my Tied a Lord. ligature of string over the stump and then threw the rest of the offending organ into the fire. In a steady voice, he called for the medical officer and survived. Every patient in Broadmoor has a story from chalk, from chalk pit murderer Thomas Lee, who tortured and murdered a man he suspected to be his wife's lover, to Anthony Bakeland, great-grandson of the founder of Bakelite, who murdered his mother before, before ordering, a chi- ordering Chinese takeout. Oh, Lord. She was alleged to have coerced her homosexual son into sexual intercourse after a succession of prostitutes had failed to inspire him. To get okay. To get there to it. He was released after eight years in Broadmoor, only to stab his grandmother in New York City. He was institutionalized again before 1981, being found suffocated with a plastic bag. Broadmoor Hospital is no longer called an asylum for the criminally insane, although I think it should be. Yeah. The hospital, very well run in providing the finest psychiatric care, has nevertheless recently had to upgrade its security. Razor wire, wire has been strung around the perimeter. Healthcare may improve, but human, made, human nature in its last resort remains ungovernable as ever. Wow. Think about being in this place. No, imagine working there. Right. That's what I'm saying. Just being a normal person. Or sound a nurse person or a doctor. And knowing or... what's in these walls, right? So with this place, is, it's since changed. Some of the buildings, you'll see some pictures of it. Some of the buildings are old and they're not used. They're dilapidated. But the modern building, it's still it's on the same hmm, ground. Interesting. So think about what's gone on. I wonder if there's like ghosts plus. and stuff. Like if it's haunted. I literally wanted to find it because it's an active facility they don't have anything nope we couldn't you can't go out and research it because it's an active facility i feel and maybe they don't let ghost hunters that's go what i'm in saying there, they're so. not gonna let it's like, interesting it's a, interesting well one day it's when a it hospital closes, but it was an insane asylum. There'll probably be some crazy spirits right. in there yeah that's what i'm kind of thinking interesting. so very creepy that was one a good one honey. on that when you just think of like how the people that are in there and those are raised yeah i mean just and in the list is deep. Yeah. This place literally held the worst people. It sounds like in it. In society. You probably only mentioned a few of them. Yeah. And the interesting part of it, I, I kind of, I hadn't mentioned it, is the first 94 patients there were women. Oh, yeah. That's right. You said it started off as a women's hospital. Yeah. Interesting. A women's insane asylum. And yes. That's what I meant. <laughs> so with that, I hope you enjoyed that one. Go out, check out some history on it. The Broadmoor Hospital in England. Yeah. Um, go like and subscribe to the show if you don't mind. We'd yep. really, really appreciate it. Yes. And what do you always say? Sharing is caring. There so share us with your friends and family. Yeah. Appreciate it. So take care. Until next time. Castro Files. Cheers. Bye, guys. Have a great week. Yeah.